going on everybody welcome back to another edition of the sinkhole with uh andrew jordan mark himley and myself tonight we have a special guest i know we use that term a lot probably kind of overused uh to an extent but this person he really is special he started as a composer like many of our guests and members in the platform and he has started a very uh, successful licensing company uh in style music Welcome the CEO of InStyle, Pedro Costa. What's up, Pedro? Hey guys, it's great to have you here, Pedro. Yeah, great to have you. you. Thanks for joining intro. us. Let me give you a brief intro of Pedro. I mean, he has an extensive bio, and he's done a lot over the last you know decade plus. But in summary, Pedro was first introduced to the world of sync in in 2011. So yeah, about 13 years ago. Uh, since then, he's had thousands of placements, including Virgin River. On Netflix, America's Got Talent, uh, Chicago Fire, The Babysitter's Club, Pawn Stars, BMW Ads, Samsung, and the list goes on. Uh, about 10 years ago, Pedro, he founded InStyle Music, a multinational full service sync uh, and production company for film TV advertising. Some work includes uh, ads for Captain Morgan. My friend Axel was a part of that. Shout out to Axel. A Nissan, a Michelob, Target, Yamaha, Xbox, TV placements on All American, uh, Your Honor on Showtime, The Grand Crew, Kung Fu, Vendor Pump Rules, Ghosted. Like, like I said, the um, the bio and the and the resume is very extensive. Uh, so thank you, Pedro, for for joining us, for you know taking the time out you know of your busy schedule. I saw that you were traveling recently as well. Yeah, my pleasure, guys. Good to be with you. Yeah. Uh, Andrew was just asking about that. I was in in LA at the beginning of the month for the GMS awards, so that was that was quite the pleasure. I tried to make it out last year because we were sponsoring the event, but I got snowed in last year. I was totally bummed out, but this year I made it, so that was, was a lot of fun. Got to meet a lot of people in person for the first time. Music supervisors that I've worked with for years, but it's all been email maybe a phone call here and there, but nice to put names to faces in in the flesh for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Is there is there anything that I that is that is cool. Is there anything that I didn't cover? Like I said, I know like with the with the brief intro, how long you've been doing it, uh would you could you would you want to tell us about uh something about yourself that I didn't mention, whether it's your resume or what drove you to sync licensing in the first place? Uh, sure. I mean, uh, I think you covered most of it from a uh, history perspective. We, I could jump in and, and do a bit of an intro of kind of my history and music and how I got into sync in the first place. So yeah. as, as a young child, I, I always loved music, of course, as we all do. Everybody who's listening to this probably did. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Um, my mom uh, was musical. She was a, a singer and uh, coming from a Portuguese background, she she actually sang Fado, which is a, a traditional Portuguese style of music. They, they consider it like the Portuguese blues, I guess you could say. And uh, so I grew up listening to her sing. And then I grew up in the 80s. So there was tons of awesome pop music. I loved the top 40 pop all the time. Uh, I remember listening to the radio and recording the top 40 hits on tape and then replaying them back and singing along. Um, uh, so that that was kind of my my background in music, how it all got started. At age eleven, I remember I wrote my first song. I didn't play a musical instrument. Nobody in in my household played musical instruments. Just my mom was a singer. Um, and then at fifteen, sixteen, I bought my first guitar, and that's kind of how things got started. By the end of high school, I had a Portuguese band and I had a hard rock band. I also was involved with an a cappella vocal quartet. Uh, we did uh, barbershop style music, which was fantastic and it was a lot of fun. We literally could go and do gigs with no setup, which was fantastic. Wow. Uh, it was 
great ROI for anybody out there that wants some good money at that age. Um, we did really well at, at that time. Um, so then after that, I kind of I kind of took a little bit of a break. I started a family and uh, got into my regular career, which is in information technology. Um, and so kind of got back into it. I always say, tell people after my boys were out of their diapers, I got back into recording and I was always passionate about writing my own music. So even during the period where I had the hard rock band, like most of the band members were just interested in doing covers, but I always, always had that bug to do my own music. And so in two, around 2008, I started recording again. And by then you could actually do quite a bit with your PC at home with the home studio, which was impossible pretty much up until that point. Could get really good drum sounds, which as a rock guy, that, that was kind of my interest at the time. I really wanted to have the actual rock drums and you could actually pull that off in 2008. And so I, I recorded a couple of songs and posted them online and, uh, Kind of had a fluke thing happen to me where one of my songs got discovered in Poland of all places and ended up in their top charts, which wow. was insane. A crazy wow, experience. Awesome. I didn't know what was happening. I just saw the stats on my website blow up and it was all <laughs> coming from Poland. And then I found this uh, old forum and I logged into it and set up an account. And I'm like, hey, I'm Pedro. I'm trying to find out more about this. And nobody believed that it was truly the real Pedro. <laughs> wow. It was just hilarious. But anyway, around that same time, I discovered some other online communities. And uh, I met uh, Lydia Ashton, who some of you guys probably know. Mm -hmm. And she's the one that introduced me to the world of uh, film and TV music. And she said, you should check this out. She gave me links to some of the taxi forums, which is the organization that I ended up joining to get started on this journey. And so I read through some of those articles and eventually I decided, OK, I'm going to sign up. And then that's kind of how it all got started. Um, by 2009, I think is when I joined, late 2009. Then I met people on the forum. My first taxi conference, what they call the taxi rally, was in 2010, I believe. And there I met already people that I knew from the forums. And at that point, I had my first uh, placement um, on my own, um, which was a through taxi, a, a direct to music supervisor. Um, they wanted to use a song that I uh, produced for them on as the theme of a TV show for Discovery. Um, kind of a long story around there, but I ended up with the placement and uh, also with connections to the music, music supervisor, executive producers of the show, which then led to other future connections with my uh, company as well. Um, so kind of roughly yeah, like you said, a few years in, 2014 was when InStyle got started. And that all came about uh, from one of the first placements that I got, which was with uh, Steve Giles. He reached out to me, I think it was around Christmas of 2010. And some producer at ABC reached out to him. They were doing a Christian Amanpour special uh, for Christmas. It was kind of a news documentary kind of a thing. And they found one of his songs and he kind of panicked. He's like, this thing isn't even mixed. It's like a demo. Pedro, can you help me out? And so our relationship back then was more of, I, I had a bit more of the producer chops and he was more of the artist chops. So we kind of collaborated. Um, and so we ended up not only fixing that track, but then they reached out to us for a custom song for one of the scenes. And so we like threw that together so quickly and, and we thought, okay, this is how this all works. This is great. 
and just kind of throw something together. And by next day, it's playing on TV, which literally happened to us. Of wow. course, that's not how this industry works at all. Sometimes it does, but it's a fluke. Wouldn't it be uh, nice? But, but that was super exciting to me. I really liked the idea of creating something custom. So really got excited about that idea. And of course, it's not always the case, but that even now is what excites me the most is doing custom music. So that's really how it all got started. And of course, then from then on, more and more relationships, more and more music produced and publishers getting the music out to uh, production companies, et cetera, all over the place. And uh, many placements later, here we are. But um, after I started in style, I, I kind of uh, producing music for myself kind of took a little bit of a backseat and uh which which is okay and i do miss it but it, it is exciting to help others get their music placed um in a way i kind of like that more but i i do miss writing my own stuff as well but even then with the amount of music that i got out at the time i've still been able to amass a, f a few thousand placements uh, over the years, and it's it's incredible to still watch them happen with things that I produced over a decade ago. Mm. That's very cool. That's very cool. That was yeah, a lot there. So that was a lot. So I want to go back to That's something that you had mentioned. In with questions. No, no, that, that was that was really good. You, like the timeline of everything. Steve just being the guy who you know, Steve and I have a great relationship as well. Um, so you you mentioned that. So around the t or the the with the segue from being a composer to a library was kind of like seamless um because you said what, what whatever had occurred with steve and that collaboration had you know yeah i guess i didn't clarify that well enough but the the that one abc gig um that we did steve and i that same producer reached out to me like three years later and said hey doing this brand new show i'd love to get music from you loved working with you guys can you guys do the music for the show well at this point both steve and i have full-time jobs we have families uh outside of music it's like well there's no way that we can put all that music together for your show and so that's when i thought well why not reach out to all of the friends that I already have in the industry mm. and kind of pool all the music together that they're looking for and get this thing started. So it kind of, it happened very organically that way out of the need. And then it just kept running. That, that makes sense. Cause that, I just, I still want to kind of go on that question. Cause there's a lot there. So Andrew and Mark, they compose. I, I'm a songwriter artist. Did you feel like it would be overwhelming to you were st still kind of new to the world of singing? Did you feel it overwhelming to be a composer and just have this idea to get your 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 peers involved to possibly start a company? Because I know how overwhelming it could be just to, to songwrite and top line. So did you? Is that the reason why you you just didn't have the time? I guess to do both like. Is that, did you have the intention on going all out with the company and kind of pulling back from the composition side? Yeah, I just, I didn't, I didn't think that I'd be able to pull off writing a whole season of a show like that. And they, they were looking for a lot of vocal songs too at the time for that particular show. So it was like, there's just no way that I can do that all. So I, and for the, the sake of variety in the show, they wouldn't want music from one artist either. So I was almost kind of thinking a little bit ahead of what the producer was even thinking at the time, I guess, in a way. Uh, no offense to the producer, but um, so that's really how it got started. Uh, as far as running or starting a company, I had had a bit of experience with that prior uh, to that back in. Uh, late 90s, early 2000s, I, I ran a, a, an internet label um, with a bunch of artists. So I had, I had a bit of a business background that made me feel a little bit more comfortable to jump into that and try, try to run with it. 
uh, plus my uh, experience from a corporate perspective on the information technology side also mm. gave me the confidence to that I'd be able to jump in and and run with it. Of course, not to say that it wasn't a massive learning curve and not to say that I'm still not learning every day now, a decade later, but um, it was something that I felt fairly comfortable to to give a go, I guess I could say. I was going to jump in and say uh, one of the things that I think was really like, I didn't know that you had an IT background, but looking now at how streamlined the process is within style in regards to how you guys operate with your composers and the interface and all that stuff, uh, that makes a lot of sense. And that's one of like, I really enjoy that side of things on in style because it, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. Um, you know, there's, there's just like a system and you go through and it works, it works, uh, efficiently. And I can, I can see the IT mindset, <laughs> you know, behind that, you know, now, now knowing that, that you had that background. Thank yeah. hundred percent, hundred, hundred percent agree with that. It's one of the smoothest, by far smoothest processes out of any publisher I've ever worked with. Yeah. Eas easily. Number one, it's, it's really, really streamlined and really great. Thank you guys. Yeah. yeah no, thanks on that. It's yeah, definitely thanks. something that I obsess a little bit about, and I know our production coordinator George is has similar mindset to myself. So we we're always trying to figure out like what's the best way, and of course to streamline things, a lot of times you have to simplify. Mm -hmm. And in our case, because we try to be so versatile, it's really hard to simplify the system. Um, so that poses some challenges, but we, we rack our brains like constantly, how can we make things run smoother for everybody for, well, for ourselves as well, but especially for the, for the artists coming in. And, uh, in fact, over the last couple of months, that's been one of the big topics of conversation within our company is how do we streamline, um, the onboarding of artists? and provide them additional information up front to make them understand a little bit better of what we do. Because right now, like our, our website, as it is, it was set up years ago. It's super simple. There's very little information. So when somebody goes there and maybe they're wanting to submit music as an audition, they really don't know what they're getting into. And then we essentially hit them up with uh, contracts and then that overwhelms them. So we're trying to figure out like how do we how do we provide them more information up front before they even submit music. So that's been kind of a thing ongoing, really like literally this week we had some meetings talking about that, and it's a matter of uh, now putting what we've essentially come up with into a website form that they can um, that artists can review before submitting. So it's we put a lot of time and effort and thought into trying to really make things run as smoothly as possible for ourselves, for the artists, and of course, for our clients. It's, uh, and, and like you guys said, I think it's a bit of the IT part of me in it. And it's like, there's, there's got to be a way to make it better through automation, through modifying the process, something. And so that's something that we definitely put a lot of effort into. So it's nice to see that, or nice to hear that you guys can recognize that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think I think there's also like it sounds like you're you're trying to tackle now even some of the educational aspect of things. When you bring somebody on, a lot of times for somebody that's brand new to sync, they don't know like what uh you know what this contract is 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 for and like what it actually means you know so it can be scary there's a lot of things that might be a turnoff for somebody that maybe have a ton of talent be ready to go but just not understand that stuff i'm sure i that's honestly like the thing that kind of drove the three of us to really start the sinkhole is the education aspect of it trying to help people get past some of those initial barriers i think that's kind of for anybody in the industry they have to find ways to help people get to that point where they understand a good working relationship how the how the 
how the whole system kind of works, you know, understanding a lot of the basics. So there's not frustration on either end, because there's going to if, if you don't have that there, there's going to be friction or there's going to be miscommunication. Little things can throw that off, I think, from the beginning, if it's not done well, you know, up front. Yeah, definitely. And it's problem, too, is that there's no company does it exactly the same way. So to understand, like, how do you how do you guys function? What is it that you do for me? What is it that you do for your clients? And even that question changes a lot. Like, uh, I ran into one of our composers that's been with us probably at least five years and met him in person at a conference recently. And we were talking and he literally stopped me and he said, wait, you guys also work with vocal songs? And I'm like, really? <laughs> wow. Like, have you not clued into that? Uh, After all the newsletters that we no send kidding. out, et cetera, et cetera. And it's wow. like, sometimes it's just hard to, like, get the information to people at the right time or when they're ready for it. Like, it's, it, it's hard to communicate. Communication mm -hmm. is tough. Yep. So we try to figure out the best way and, and to cater to people coming from all walks of life or all kinds of experiences or, all, or different expectations, people that come that maybe had a record deal in the past with a major and now they're wanting to go independent and work with a company like us. Like they, their mindset is in the old record deal world and then they look yeah. at our agreement and they may go well that doesn't make sense yeah it wouldn't make sense for them but it makes sense in our world so it's yeah it's tough to cater to everybody but we try to try to do the best we can yeah and you guys do a phenomenal job like and you know you know shout out to your team man madison and george like the the mixture of the personalities and the skill sets is just a it's a great blend it's a great blend Thanks, Terrell. Yeah, shout out to them as well. So, yeah, Very definitely. Awesome. And I don't know if they're watching. I know George is probably, you know, it's late where he's at. But um, oh, yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned a lot about the company. What are some of the like services that you actually offer? Like because your your composer that's been a part of the, the company for all these years, he didn't know that you all accepted songs uh, with vocals. So just, yeah, maybe name a few you know services that you offer. Yeah, that and that's that's a good point too because when we first started in 2014, there was that initial show where they needed vocal songs, but quickly after we shifted to doing pretty much exclusively production music. And for those that don't know really what production music is, it tends to be music that gets used as underscore for a lot of TV shows, documentaries, things of that nature. So it we spent a lot of years focusing on uh, production music, working with shows like Vice on HBO um, and a lot of reality TV shows, things of that nature. Um, and so I, I would say that pre, pre the pandemic, a few years pre pandemic is really when we started pushing more on the artist indie artist vocal song side and getting placements um, for either source or um, uh, ad um, ads or promos, things like that uh, for TV, film and advertising, obviously. Um, so it's so you could see that if that particular composer had kind of disconnected from what we were doing for a while, which I think is what happened, he wouldn't have been paying attention and would have kind of been lost in that shuffle. But yeah, the the services definitely have evolved over the years. And we, what also happened in recent years is we, we took the company more global, mm, our primary territories were always Canada and the US because we're based in Canada. But I would say probably 90% of our business is in the US just because of the size of the market. And then uh, also pre pandemic, we opened up in style in the UK. So we have the three primary territories. 
And then we also looked for partners around the world that could represent us in various territories or key territories in the world, some of the bigger markets around the world. So we have uh, 25 other territories that are very well represented by self-publishing partners now. So that there's been kind of that evolution of how can we um, bring more value to our uh, artists and composers and their music that we have. Um, we initially started with a non-exclusive deal. Then we also added a, an exclusive option, which obviously gives us a lot more flexibility to be able to monetize those uh, those copyrights around the world because we have full control over them, uh, including distribution on Spotify and all of the other uh, companies as well, even though for the most part for production music, it's fine, but we actually get uh, some plays on there. And it was more on the production music side, it was more from the idea of being able to uh, easily promote the music as well on that side through playlists and, and things like that. Um, so right now, as a company, we, we are essentially a full service a music licensing and music production company, um, including custom music. There's pretty much nothing that we can do, including a collection of all of the uh, royalties for those works around the world, including in territories we don't where we don't have sub-publishing um, representation. We also collect uh, publishing admin in all the other countries. So we can essentially get a placement for an artist and from end to end, get them the full amount that they should expect to receive for that placement and use of their copyright. So it's uh, it, it's been interesting to, to see it evolve over the years when I when I think back to where we started and where we are now and where we are planning to take it further into the future. There's definitely still room to grow and further enhance our services. I know some of you uh, may have, as a company we have, a, for those that are watching, we have a private Facebook group. So, uh, and also we send out newsletters to, to our artists and composers and so I, I shared that we recently landed a, a deal with one of the largest uh, media companies in the world. And uh, <clears throat> so that's just one example of the kinds of things that we're trying to uh, continue to do to grow uh, exposure of the music that we have on hand for all of our artists and composers. No, that's, that's a really thorough, very good stuff. I yeah, be, being a part of of in style for um, some years now. I can't remember exactly when. Just seeing the growth and the evolution, like over the years, has been just cool to watch. Yeah, Thanks, we, absolutely. We, we talk about it like all the time, and we're not even <laughs> just saying no, this. We no, say we like we're not just saying it because we yeah yeah in style. It's just it's impressive to see the consistent moving forward of all the different ways that the company like just. I mean, in the time that I've been in sync I've, I've been in like close to five years now and had the privilege of working early on uh with you guys when i hadn't really much experience and seeing the consistency of the communication the upgrades all the news the communication all that stuff has just been yeah it's on another level it really is so it's very cool to see thanks guys appreciate yep. it yeah burn band agrees but we're all we're all friends of burn band <laughs> very talented guy right there. yeah incredible i can't so, see who's all here because i'm on oh, uh, oh you oh, probably sure. want, oh that's probably what yeah yeah, yeah I, I, question pedro do you think when you first started in style did having it be non-exclusive do you think that helped people to be more willing to trust a new company versus if you would have just launched out it you know exclusive do you think as many people would be willing to trust a new company? Like, do you think that played into your early success? And then maybe how does adding the exclusive side, how has that, you know, 
uh, helped you to land new deals? And can you kind of talk to that? Because there might be people in here who don't really know non-exclusive or exclusive, uh, the difference, you know? Well, I think from from our perspective, it was how do, how can you aggregate a lot of music quickly? And if you tr are trying to aggregate exclusive music, it has to be still composed. So that would be kind of an, an impossibility to pull it off for that particular project that uh, that I was trying to work on for that producer at ABC. So it was kind of the need that um, that pushed it that way, but at the same time, from an ethical perspective as as a person, I didn't feel like I would be able to properly properly monetize copyrights exclusively, not having more than one contact at the time, right? It was just that one deal to start. And when we put it together, it was almost like, hey, maybe we'll do this and be done with it. But then it just kind of kept going. So by the time that I felt comfortable to go exclusive, it was combination of we had enough um, clientele at the time, and we we had some clients that were already requesting exclusivity as well. So it was a combination of those two things. It was like, hey, this is the right time that we can easily. Um, have some exclusive copyrights that we, we can fully monetize for the artist and give them the full exposure that those copyrights deserve, including then going global through sub publishers. So having the full uh, worldwide coverage in the primary, primary and key territories, as well as some clientele that required exclusivity. Um, and having enough clientele that it would make it worth it for for the artists and composers. So it was kind of a more of a timing thing and when it made sense to to start exclusivity. Yeah, that I'm makes sense. I'm not sure if I answered your yeah. whole question there. Yeah, no, that makes yeah. total sense. Yeah, it does. Thanks for sharing that. Um, you're like, we had the questions, but you're hitting on a lot of them in advance but we could still it's all good it's still informal this is all a, a yeah. family affair so it's all good exactly. um you mentioned yeah you mentioned it you might have mentioned this a little bit earlier but maybe um we could dive in what role do partnerships play in your business model and can you share an example of a successful uh, partnership yeah so when when we think of partnerships we think of pretty much all of the relationships that were in our partnerships. So with our artists and composers, that's the first partnership. Like without artists and composers, we don't have music, so we can't do anything, right? So that's that in a way is one of our key partnerships. We have to have the music and we have to have clients to give that music to. Without the clients, the artists and composers aren't happy. And without the artists and composers, the clients aren't happy because we don't have music for them, right? So it kind of go, they're kind of the key ones. Um, so, uh, and that speaks to what I was talking about earlier. How do we make things smoother all the time for the artists and composers? How, are, how can we be more transparent? I think that we, we are pretty transparent, but we're always looking at ways to reduce friction, reduce the amount of questions, like how how can we provide more information? Um, so obviously then when it comes to our clientele, um, we have great partnerships with production music companies. Like I mentioned earlier, we have great partnerships with uh, major networks, uh, major media companies around the world and especially in the US. And of course, individual partnerships with music supervisors who tend to work independently. So getting to know music supervisors and um, becoming a reliable partner with them is very important, which means having a sense of trust both ways, uh, being very professional in the way that we approach all the work that we do with them. Um, so I, I think, 
uh, Terrell, in your intro, you you mentioned the your honor placement that we got. So that's a great example of a good partnership with with music supervision company where they reached out to us for custom work and we were able to pull it off um, and land that one placement, which required a bit of tweaking, but we were able to pull it off. And it, it's probably one of my favorite placements just because of how unique it is with a, a quote unquote live band playing on scene, but they're actually playing the music that our artists produced but the cinematography makes it look like they are actually playing it by them playing a few notes up close right at the beginning and then it pans out to the whole band and then it doesn't matter because the audience is now convinced that they're watching a real performance but then the actress in the show actually sang the song so we ended up having to adjust the key for the actress as well, which was was pretty cool with, especially with today's technology, it made it a lot easier to do that. Um, but that, those are definitely my favorite uh, things, doing something custom and landing it right from the beginning, like I mentioned earlier, my first experiences in sync were custom. So that was a great example of a, great partnership with a music supervision company and and then of course our sub publishers our international sub publishers are great partners they take the music that we provide them and they go out and try to place it with their own customers in their own territories so that's a very key partnership for us uh, developing that international um, presence but as well as revenue for our artists. And we continue to see year after year the international revenue going up as well, which is phenomenal for us, uh, especially from a, a company's perspective and in the way that we want to make sure that we have uh, our artists and composers uh, well represented in the sense of continuing to receive value for the trust that they've put in us. Um, because you never know what's going to happen in one particular territory. For example, I think of the US last year with the strikes, it was very, very difficult, especially for scripted TV shows. And a little bit of that is continuing into this year. There's a lot of uncertainty with the I at these potential strikes that are coming. So a lot of the networks currently aren't green lighting new shows. So it's it's made it very difficult in, in the industry in Hollywood right now. But because we are diversified worldwide, it does help for us to maintain our operations and continue to move forward without having to uh, do any cuts to our staffing or anything like that at this point. Um, so I think I, I maybe a little little bit off track there, but all about partnerships and how important they that they are uh, having all of those relationships. We also have some other uh, agency partnerships that work with us to pitch music in specific sectors, like the ad ad sector, for example. We work with a couple of companies that act as agents for us in those areas, just because at this point, we do have some direct ad agency representation, but not a whole lot. So we, again, always looking to figure out how do we maximize uh, what we can do in the moment. And as soon as we can uh, optimize those ad agency relationships, then we may opt to get out of those relationships with those agents potentially we'll see that's way in the future right now it's all working well for us so we'll continue to do it that way um yeah so partnerships are very important definitely yes they are they are everything this question this last question i'm going to make it two-parted because it's kind of two separate questions but they're kind of you know they're kind of related. So I'm gonna ask this, we could take some Q and A, we could take some questions from the audience and then we can get into the review if that's cool with everybody. Um, so, uh, because like with the sinkhole is a mixture of like newer 
artists and composers and more experienced like you know burn band and you know steve mcdonald and, and all those people um so what things do you look for when considering like a new artist and you know working with them part one of the question and then what should they consider and be prepared for you know when they submit you know music to you all yeah great questions um so typically the question that we get is what are you guys looking for which the the answer to that question is always great music because that answer kind of is pretty accurate based on the question like the question should be a little bit more more uh more nuanced as you put it terrell like what specific things are we looking for when considering working with a new artist that's a good question so yes we're looking for great music but we listen to a lot of great music on a daily basis that we pass on and that includes music from our own composers and artists that are submitted directly through our submission portal we'll reject stuff and be like wow that's a great track reject and the reason is because we just d can't see where we would place it and sometimes we try to stretch it and think well is there even a client that we currently don't have that maybe we will have in the future that it it could work for but if it's if we just can't figure out a way that we could place it then we'll let it go so that's one thing so great music but it has to be syncable we have to figure out a way to find a home for it within our industry um then for looking at the artists themselves we we try to get a, a sense of like how professional is this artist have they done their homework do they know what they're getting into uh and are they interested in learning sometimes we'll get uh an email that you can tell that it's like a excuse me like a a cold email that they've sent to a whole bunch of companies and it talks about you know it, it back in the 80s i got this award and won a grammy and this and that and it's like that's all great but is the music syncable now so a lot of times those things just it i think of that um shania twain song <laughs> that don't impress me much <laughs> you know um like the music either works or it doesn't or it could be great music that I personally love that I'll throw on my Spotify playlist and that has happened, but I'll reject it because it, we just can't use it. Um, and like we were talking about partnerships, this all boils down to, we wanna find good business partners and that's the artists and composer as well. Are they willing to do the work? Uh, are they demonstrating that they are? Have they done some work? Um, and then um, also honesty. So that really should be the one, uh, number one on the list. But just like we provide transparency to our artists and composers, we look for transparency in our partners. Because if, if they're hiding something from us, that's just going to cause issues for them and for us. Uh, we pay a lot of music, or sorry, a lot of music, a lot of money for e o insurance and we do a lot of work to make sure that the things that we are onboarding are well vetted and so if somebody is not being 100 percent honest with us and we can sniff that out we're probably not going to work with them because we can't compromise our company and all of the other writers and composers that have put their trust in our company um, so those are the things that we look for. Um, now, how do we look for them? Um, currently, we have a, a submission process through our website. So we do some vetting um, by listening to the music. We do some sleuthing online. Then we reach out with tons of questions, and we try to get a sense. 
that, like I mentioned earlier, we've been having conversations internally on how to modify that process. So it's going to become a little bit more onerous on the front end, but I think it's going to eliminate people that are showing up that are maybe not willing to do the minimal amount of work that's needed to get started in our industry. And that's going to save us money, but it's also going to save them, sorry, save us time and money and save them time as well. Um, yeah, I don't know if I answered all the question. No, you did. You did. You did. Um, we we can open it up. That's all that I have. Thank you so much, Pedro. We can open it up, take a few questions, and then we can get to the music review. We did get a record number of submissions, so we will not be able oh, wow. to <laughs> review all of them here tonight. Pedro, I guess asking but the, a different question. For the ones that we don't uh, get to, we have a disco link. Would you want that, or would you want them to submit through the submission site, um, the submission link on the on the website? Let's do a disco link okay, if you already okay. have it. We yeah, and yeah, yeah, if, yeah, we do. If there's something specific that we hear, I'll reach out to you guys and we can kind of get that um vetting process started, I guess. Okay, perfect. Yeah, okay, cool. So if, if anybody, any viewers have any questions for Pedro, now's the time to ask. If not, we can just get straight into the review. Perfect. Yeah, we have four so far. So do we want to go into the audience Q&A before the music review trail? Yeah, let's do that. I think that's fine. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Sure. So the first question here I will pull up is from Andy Lutzka. Uh, are there specific genres clients go to? Uh, go to InStyle for music. Sorry, I just having to struggle reading that one. Also, which genres do you see that are in demand more recently with the clients you are working with? Yeah, this, this is the question we get so often, but it, there's really, unless we're working on a specific TV show, for example, where it's like a certain style of music, then there's really nothing that we're looking for that's more in demand than another thing. We literally get requests for music multiple a day um, and they're all over the place. So it's it's very hard to answer this question. Sorry, Andy. Yeah, and like you said earlier, you just need great music because you never know who's going to request what. Yeah, and, and usually, like especially if it's a, a music supervisor request, they need it like now. So we all, if we have it on hand and it's already signed into our catalog, then we can. <sighs> pop it in a disco link and send it over to them. And we can say, hey, this is already pre-cleared. It's insured with us, you know, one stop through us, go ahead, uh, drop it into the scene if you need to. And if you're good to license, reach out. Um, but yeah, as far as specific things, it's just all over the place. That makes sense. All right, next we have a question from Orion. Orion's actually a classmate of mine, so good to see you here. Um, I'm seeing on your submission page that Pub Admin will create a challenge. Does having material registered with Song Trust create an issue in working with a company like InStyle Music? And maybe if you want to add on, I've heard you speak about this before, and I know it's a huge issue, the whole CD Baby issue, when people check that box, if they want to you know, have CD Baby take care of your sync royalties. Yeah, so <clears throat> this question is not an easy one um, because there's so many ways to look at it. So if if you had something, um, if we're signing something exclusively, for example, we want that work to be original to us. So then it will never end up uh, with somebody else's pub admin or on song trust or anything like that because we're the ones managing all of the copyrights for that work now let's let's assume that we're talking about a vocal song and they want to submit to us non-exclusively well in the non-exclusive world to register that work to be a unique work that is registered to us, you need to add some kind of identifier. Some companies 
will retitle the entire song, what we do is we add like a code in front of the song to give it that unique identifier that you can register with the PRO. So when we get the placement on a film or a TV show, the cue sheet will have that unique identifier that will then recognize InStyle Music as the publisher for that piece of music. Now, if you have a song registered with, like you use the example of using a DSP and then getting them to do publishing admin for that piece of music around the world. So when you do that, there are some PROs around the world that will may recognize the original, but if the cue sheet comes in that shows, okay, for this film, it's this code and that song, they may not recognize us as the publisher and they'll say, well, this song is registered with that particular title here. And so we're gonna send it to the publishing admin, which is whatever that DSP is that you've signed with. And so now all of a sudden we're out our publishing rights. And to try to fight that uh, through the process, the existing process is essentially a nightmare and we're ne never gonna see that money. And so we try to avoid the whole publishing admin sign with somebody else. But in addition to that, when you look at publishing admin as a whole, as soon as you sign a publishing admin deal, in essence, you have signed that song exclusively to whoever you've signed the publishing admin deal with, because it can't reside non-exclusively with the publishing admin signed to somebody else. So we can control publishing admin on our exclusive music, but not on non-exclusive we can collect on the placements that we get, but not publishing admin uh, around the world for that particular work. So it causes a lot of problems. Um, and I've talked with other, um, other uh, CEOs of other companies that deal with the same issue. I think some of them have been guests on this show before and they all feel the same way. It's just too much of a hassle um, that, we frankly don't get enough royalties or payment to be able to chase that with staffing costs. It would just be impossible. So, uh, but again, to sign a pub admin, admin deal and then treat it as non-exclusive, contractually, it's, it, it's legally incorrect as well from my understanding of how the, the laws work around those agreements. You're, you've essentially signed off your publishing to that company for them to administer it. So how can you then have it non-exclusively with another company? It, it just doesn't jive legally, as, as I understand it. I'm not a lawyer, of course, but that's my understanding and how I've been advised um, oh, makes total by sense. my legal counsel. Sure, absolutely. All right, moving on to the next question here from Julian. How important is a Disco account? Are sending SoundCloud links or other link forms okay? Or is Disco the way to go? Um, <clears throat> well, I guess it depends on the context of the question. So is it to send to a company like ours? If so, then how it's being sent doesn't really matter. Um, and, and it will, where it will matter is depending what you what the intention is. So if you're wanting to sign music with us non-exclusively, even a Spotify link to your song will be fine. It's a public link. That song will be non-exclusive with us, so it's fine. If you're pitching something to us that you've just created and you want us to represent exclusively, then we would look for something that's private. So whether it's a disco account or a private SoundCloud link would be fine as well. Perfect, and then one last question I actually did already answer in the chat, but I just wanna give you a chance if you wanna to speak to it as well, Pedro. Um, do you sign any instrumental music non-exclusively? Non I, I read that originally as exclusively, so I guess if you wanna answer that. 
Yeah, so instrumental music non-exclusively, typically we don't. Um, but uh, we, we do, if again, just like my origin story of the company, if a client came to us all of a sudden and said, oh yeah, we, we're doing this show and we want a full season worth of music, and the style of music that they want is so uh, so different from anything that we have that we're like, yeah, we don't have anything, but we want to satisfy the client and get the job done. In a situation like that, we may reach out to all of our composers and artists and say, hey, do you have anything like this? We will sign it non-exclusively to bring it in for this project. But outside of that, there's usually enough time to sign things exclusively and then fully monetize those assets uh, around the world. Um, yeah, so it, it would have to be a situation like that or if if there was like a custom request, for, for example. So literally last night we got a last minute custom request in the middle of the night from a music supervisor very specific style of music that we didn't have so we essentially uh said hey send send in what you got to this disco link and if anything if there's any interest from the music supervisor then we'll onboard them so in that case we would onboard those instrumentals non-exclusively for that purpose so very custom purpose but in general we wouldn't sign an instrumental uh, non-exclusively makes total sense all right that is the last makes audience sense. question yes all right Pedro, how, how much time do you have because like i said we we usually try to keep it at our mark we I think we kept tom v for like an hour and a half but don't feel any obligation just we can get through a few and we can kind of play it by ear um i'm totally chill whatever you okay. guys want okay like cool. i said we got the evening for you guys if I start to fade, I'll let you know, but I'm okay right now. I still have water here. It is getting warm in the room here, but. Okay, cool. That's good to know. All right. So, Mark, we good to we start or move into the to music review? Yep. And like Pedro okay. mentioned earlier, for anyone who wasn't here, if you had a submission on time, you're a member of the sinkhole, we are going to pass along the disco playlist with all the submissions. So, even if yours doesn't get played tonight, it will be sent off. So. So are all the people that submitted here? Um, we can see how many. Show? A few of them are in the house. Yeah, a few have commented. So, yeah, some are in Europe. So I don't know. Like, like, like Helen, she's in Europe. So I don't know if she's awake this late. But most of the people that submit in like in the West and the U.S. are or wherever are usually here. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. So, the, so I'll get this queued up yep. here and. Like we said at the top of the hour, just give us a thumbs up or hold your hand up whenever you've heard enough and we can pause it and talk about it. Sounds good. So first first submission is Work featuring Jazz by M. Sani. This is artist name. He's, he's a friend of mine, Ron. Um, so yeah, get to work. <laughs> get to work. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, Ma from Old Beats. You a genius. We back at it. Masani. Hey, yo, Jazz. We got one. Let's go get him. Uh, I'm blessed to be alive, so just watch me work. Cause they hating on the kid like a Miley twerk. A new day's dawn, so you gotta listen. Men, the grind don't stop, time to pay attention. Uh -huh. I've been making moves just to silent with them. Don't let the left hand know what the right is doing. I'm here for the pain and the competition. That's how character is built. Check the opposition. I've outlived many. Watch me stand tall. No misconception. I am him. This my theme song. With Marv on the beat, I will never lose. Jazz got the hooks so the team. We forever cook. Out here making music for these movies. Painting pictures with words absurd. I don't others do it. We gon' grind hard till the wheel fall Watch me manifest my next step We gon' win, yo Around the world and back like I'm a shipping boat From town to town holding indigenous hope 
Cook and distribute fast like this is dope work. For years with no fear, so listen close. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't going nowhere. 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 <laughs> yeah, I think it sounded really good. Uh, great beat. Um, what I was hoping to hear was a hook. So it it kind of dragged on. I I thought there would be like a like a chorus or a hook coming up, but it just seemed to be kind of consistent throughout, which is okay. There's some usage there. I thought like sports or competition. Um, like a show like All American that we've placed music in before could be potential here um, for those scenes where they're on the football field, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I was kind of missing that hook in this song. That was my only critique, I guess you could say. But I thought it was good. Yeah, good work on work. <laughs> Great. Can, Pedro, what do you think of songs? It typically happens in hip hop, but like when they start out with all the producer tags and the talking, like. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, producer tags, like that's that's one of my pet peeves. Like if, if one comes in like that, that's probably the first thing that I do is send a change request back, get rid of the producer tag. Like I don't want to even listen to it until that's gone. Yeah. It, I, it's one of my pet peeves because you wouldn't want to hear that in a, TV, in a TV show, you know. So for for those of us that have been in the biz for a while, like anything that's not related to the song should should be gone. So like effects at the beginning or a crowd talking or something like that, get rid of all that stuff or birds chirping or whatever. Um, any anything like that should be gone. Just just the musical elements, and we don't need to hear who the producer was on on the track either. Perfect. All right. Perfect. And Hel Helen Sorry, actually is in the house. Helen actually no. <laughs> is here. I thought she was asleep by now because I know I would be. Helen is here. Yeah. It's one a.m. where she's at. Shout out to oh, Helen. Wow. Are you K? Uh, friend of the room. Go, she's Helen. next. Yeah, way to go for real. This is this is dedication. Artists, this is what it takes. You gotta be up to 1 a.m. No I'm joking. Um A Delicate Matters by Helen uh, Robertson is, is the next submission. All right. Great job, Helen. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted. I'm waiting for that cello to come in. And so you had a, a perfect edit point and then the cello comes in for the next section, which is great. I think I think it's perfect. There's really nothing that I would change on it. And the, the title is great as well, Delicate Matters. It feels delicate. It's a nice piano piece. I think it has many usage, many usage potential out there. Um, yeah, I think it's great. Awesome. Any words, Andrew Terrell? Move on to number three. Nah, she, 
you killed it, Helen. You killed it. I don't think I've ever heard your music before, so that was a yeah. That's a, what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool to hear uh, somebody that we've chatted with in the in the server uh, to hear yeah. music. It's really it's great. It is. It's pretty cool. Shout out to Helen. Now, if you you, you can go to sleep now, but uh, but not <laughs> a second. Uh, that's cool that you stayed up. Next up, we got someone who's newer to sync, but he's been killing it. Uh, this is Isaac Elsie. With the with the piece uh, Midwest. Great job, Isaac. Um, the reason I let it play longer is I was I was looking to see if you would change things up throughout it. So I I heard essentially three A sections starting. So it was like guitar and then drums and then uh, like a little um, melody guitar over top. So like it repeated three times. So what I would look for in the structure would be like an A section and then break down into a B section that's doing something else melodically altogether and then back to the A section and end end. I thought I thought compositionally it was cool. I think the mix needs work to make it a little bit more balanced, but I think it's a cool starter idea, but it's not ready to to be used in anything as it is. But uh, the musical sensibility is there and I if you're just getting started, I can see great things from you, Isaac, for sure. Great feedback. Shout out to Isaac, yeah, for real. He's been, he's been, yeah, he's he's very hungry and eager to learn, and he like I said, he's been doing an amazing job uh, recently. Um, next up, we have our or a moderator in the in the server, Sarah Galvin. Uh, she's in the room as well with uh, Knife Skills. Very interesting name. So I'm kind of curious to see what this is going to sound like. <laughs> I'll say very quickly, Isaac's in the private stream, uh, stream yard room. So he did say oh, thank yeah. you. He is in the house. He so. Oh, yeah, he is. So thanks. Cool. Yeah. All right. On to Sarah's track. <laughs>
Very cool, Sarah. I liked it a lot. Kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. At one point th uh, through the process, I was thinking, okay, can, can this be done a little bit differently? But what is the purpose of the song was what I was trying to figure out. And all that I could think of was like an ad or promo situation or potentially like a trailer scenario. Um, there was some parts in, in the middle that were kind of like, okay, well, that wouldn't be used, but they could probably trim that and like take the, the two end sections, put them together. And then that ending was just fantastic. Um, so I think there's potential there for that one, but it's just figuring out the right place for it. And that's always the challenge, of course. Uh, but if the right person heard that, I could definitely hear that in an ad um, or a promo or a trailer, definitely. Uh, I used Mark Himley's free sample Fridays. Cool. Right on. Thanks, Sarah. Very cool. Well, Mark going to have to get a cut, Sarah, if that gets played. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a cut to Mark if you end uh, an ad especially. <laughs> very cool. Good job, Appreciate Sarah. that, Sarah. Yeah, yeah great job. Cool. Great job. Well, Next man. up, uh, we have Ominous Intrigue by uh, Jaredette Music. He is available. I, I think he's still in the room as well. He he had asked the question earlier. Um, yep. Yeah, he said he's yeah. here. Yep. Jared that music. All right. well done uh ominous intrigue definitely on point for the title that's always good um i like the fact that it it's moving like there's no breaks in the movement it's con continuously driving so you can you can see that used in documentary news situation where it's sitting underneath to give it a, a bit of an, an ominous intrigue <laughs> to give whatever piece it is an ominous intrigue. So it's perfectly, it's speaking to an editor right there. Um, and I mean, the, the, the sounds in it are great. Uh, uh, there's nothing that I would change. Um, and then it, it seems like halfway through you are then you have that big build and you take it to a ne an extra level, which is which is great because then it has two usages. Even that first section, you could easily loop it if you needed to and, and run it under a, a two minute segment of a documentary. But if an editor then wanted to step it up to a next level of a, di a different scene or if that one scene gets more intense, you already had that also built into that track. So I thought it was really well done. Um, nothing really that I would that I would change. Definite usage there um, in a lot of situations. Well done. Very Do you well guys concur? Yeah, it was dope. Yeah, 
it was dope. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I it's think... I. Oh, sorry. I was I was gonna say I don't know Jerome, but it sounds like he's he's done sync. Like you could hear the experience in sync a little bit, you know, just with how it was laid That's out, it. the progression and stuff like that. So it was great. Yeah. Yeah, and it like was. you pointed out, there's a great example of very intentionally titling your cues, you know, an editor is going to pick that for the right reason. And they're like, yep, that's satisfied exactly what I need. Very true. Yeah, well done. Um, well done. Yeah, next up, we got Trent Coakley. How you doing, Pedro? You you hanging in there? Yeah, I might, I might uh, get some air in the room. Hang on a sec. Okay, okay. thank you. I'll disappear cool. from the virtual room for a second. Oh, no, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's, a in and out right now. He's a ghost show. A ghost show. Yeah. I think there's a movie made about this. Time Traveler's <laughs> Wife or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> he came back. That's good. He's here. He's back. He's, yeah. He's back in the flesh. House has been destroyed now. <laughs> Unless people only watched until this point, and then they're convinced that that's what my house looks like. Right, or they just think Tanvi's hiding yeah. in the back where I'm making, the... it's not making that 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 paper, man. You know, Pedro got that yeah. the house on there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, we got Trent Coakley. I don't know if Trent's here. He's a he's a dope singer. Uh, so I think this is a, a vocal song, feeling good. He's yeah. I actually I need to hit him up. I think I have a song that I I want to get him on. But yeah, so nice. just thinking that loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in on the bright side soaking up the sunshine everything's gonna be all right just looking up can't come down yeah i'm still high life is good i'ma live it up on cloud nine it's looking like a brand new day so i'ma do it all my way we're feeling good you guys but i'm feeling good <laughs> i'm feeling great after that song Absolutely. yeah that was dope yeah that that was really good um i was trying to think like what what does it need if anything like from this the stream i can't really tell like sometimes the the audio cuts out so i'm not sure if i'm getting the full fidelity on this end or if maybe the mix needs a little bit of tweaking on this song um, that was the only thing that I thought. And then I was wondering if it would be more effective for the song to start from a verse and then go to the chorus, because it starts with a chorus and then almost feels like a letdown going to the verse after. But then it all after that, it all feels really good. Well, <laughs> I guess pun intended here. But uh, and then especially then that there's that break in the middle too that's really cool um yeah I, I think it's a great song and obviously such a universal lyric that it can be used in 
so many ways in the sync world. Um, definitely no no issues with placing that song in my mind. But the, without hearing the original on from this end, I'm just wondering if maybe the mix needs a little bit of work. And then it's a question of okay, creating like an edit where it starts from the verse. Because maybe it would play better to a listener, to a music supervisor. I don't know. It's it's a tough call there because it definitely gets your attention from the get-go, but then feels like a letdown. Whereas if it starts off well in the verse, the music supervisor will give it a chance to go to the chorus and have a listen and be like, oh, this chorus is really good. Um, so I don't know. Something, something for Trent to think about, maybe coming up with two different... Uh, two different versions um and yeah the mix i'm like i said not quite sure but maybe it needs a bit of uh the cleanup I'm not sure what what did you guys think it sounds the, great on my end so i think yeah the it, vocal very... sounded a little compressed i think more i don't know if that's like i don't know if this is i'm, I'm listening to airpods it's not the most effective sure. thing to listen to a mix on but yeah i guess mark you're hearing the original on your end right yeah, so it very well could be a result of live streaming, or I don't know if StreamYard Probably. compresses anything like as you are streaming it live. I'm not quite sure. Um, so yeah, we'll send you the disco link, and you can compare what you heard live to the actual version. Yeah, sounds good. I thought the part was great work, Trent. Yeah, yeah, I I think what he nailed was the the emotion, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, you can't, uh, you could hear that track without any words and feel good like that. Yeah. Right. The whole thing was just real cohesive with that theme. So it was, yeah, it's great. It was, Absolutely. Yeah. Great word, Trent. Big part of it. Like that's what makes something believable and totally placeable is when all the elements work together. Right. Mm. Right. You have a yeah. song that's talking about feeling good, but it's kind of in a minor key. It's probably not very convincing, right? So, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lyrics and music definitely need to be cohesive in that way. So, really well done. Yeah, Isaac says too. Uh, back to his track, my guitar seemed tucked in on 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 the low end and out of balance compared to my version. So it could be there mm. could be maybe some degradation with live streaming. Admittedly, with that one, I think that was a song where I'm not analyzing the production because it's like it's. You know, when you hear good music, you just kind of listen. And so I'm not, yeah. like, I like kind of like got lost in the moment feeling good. So, yeah, yeah, facts. <laughs> Same here. It was great. Um, Very good. Yeah. Uh, next up, I think I saw her in the room. Oh, sorry. Did I skip one? Oh, totally skipped her. Um, skip one. Julian Berger, uh, he's in the room. Uh, Jungle Beat. Um, Julian's been a part of the server for a while. I think this is the very beginning. So, yep, here we go. Here we go for Julian. All right.
Well done, Julian. I thought that it was a really cool track. Uh, try, I was trying to place it in my head when it first started and I was struggling, but then I realized, okay, this is still just an intro. And then the real, real drums kicked in. I'm going, oh yeah, now we're, we're slapping as the young people would say. <laughs> uh, so from, it, it all boils down to what are you trying to do with it? And if you're trying to make it into a, a cue to use as uh, for underscore, I would probably really trim trim down that intro and go right into that uh, full beat as quickly as possible because that really sets the stage of what the real track is that an editor can sink their teeth into. I thought the breakdown was good and then you got back in. So I heard like an A section from then, A section, breakdown, B section, and then back to an A section. Then you could easily cut it out with a sting at the end of that at, at a minute 30 or whatever and there's a perfect cue right there but the intro like was kind of meandering i didn't really know where you're going with that unless if you were using it as an instrumental to maybe build a vocal song with it or something i i don't know but if it's for a cue i would probably trim down that that uh, intro is what i'm thinking again from this end like it was cutting out a little bit. So I think the StreamYard stream kind of is maybe a little bit degraded. Sure. But it sounded good. Like, I don't know, Mark, on your end, how how did the production sound? I trust your ears. Yeah, Um. I think with this one, one thing I picked up, there's a little bit of like background noise, almost like FX, which would obviously not work with sync. But I mean, just, I think all of your points are spot on, you know? as far as like structure and arrangement goes. Mix, I mean, it could use a little work. Sure, it's not perfect, but I definitely think StreamYard's degrading things. Yeah, but yeah, good good work overall. Depending on the purpose, you're gonna have to do a little bit of editing, but I mean, the the main main pieces are there. So it's, it's just minor adjustments now for whatever the ultimate usage is. I'm not sure how far Julian is in his like uh, sync journey or like how much sync music he's he's produced, but uh, if if it's like something fairly newer, um, one of the things that like I think is important early on is to really try to um, make your track as usable as possible, like as appealing as possible. Like that to me sounds like a a fairly usable track. Um, but you could make it even more usable if like you took Pedro's advice and like made the the, the beginning, you know, a little shorter uh, so it didn't kind of drag on. It, it had more forward motion and movement, you know, throughout. And then you had like um, some clear edit uh, points or, or some breaks where then it went into the new section, added those, you know, that hi hat, you know, thing that was going on later on. So I think it's there. It's just it's a matter of reworking a little bit to make it fit uh, the kind of the the layout that works for a lot of produ production music in general i think yeah absolutely 100 percent. how many more do we have i think I'm starting so to fade. <laughs> you, yeah yeah we're, we're halfway done so uh let's let's get the link over to you I'll, I'll email that over tonight uh are you all accepting um general submissions on the website yeah, we okay. still accept general submissions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll email you the the Disco link right after this stream. And to the artists that didn't get a chance to submit, uh, I don't know if Mark wants to put it up on the on the video. Uh, you can submit directly to them. Read the instructions because, like I said, Pedro is very thorough and um, it's not hard to to follow. But it's just so this is instylemusic.com backslash submissions is where yeah. you can submit i do know that pedro will only probably reach out if he hears things that he likes and that he he wants to add uh to the catalog i had a friend submit to to to, to install before he never heard back he reached out to me i'm like i don't i don't know like that's i, I mean i know pedro but i don't know the process but then he, you you were explaining to me if you're interested you'll reach out start the vetting process if not you won't hear back anything but yeah that's thank you yeah. pedro so much man the the yeah thanks for that terrell the, yeah. the 
I wanted to to emphasize that that we do have a little bit of instructions right now. It's probably going to change in the future, but okay. uh, we do look for people to follow those instructions. When they don't, that's an instant red flag that we mm -hmm. go, okay, well, they couldn't even follow the few things that we said from the get go. So what's the relationship going to be like afterwards? Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it immediately puts a little bit of doubt in our minds. Mm -hmm. and, and as for the, the process, um, the music goes through the team by the time it gets to me. Um, it means that the rest of the team already agrees that I should listen to it. So if it's, if it's not something that we can use, um, the team will discern that from the get go. Um, but it, if it gets to me, then again, like we discuss it as a team and figure out like, is this right for us? Like there's a lot of, a lot of thought and effort and time put into even the, uh, the unsolicited or I guess unsolicited audition through the website. Um, so we appreciate when people follow the instructions, definitely. And I was going to, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I was just going to say, um, so yeah, follow, if you can follow the instructions and then we will definitely reach out if it's something we feel we can use and we'd like to start a partnership with you. And you would probably hear from, um, either George or, or Madison in that regard. Um, and, um, if you don't hear back, don't don't be discouraged. Just submit new material uh, once you have some, like in six months or or whatever. Yeah, I was gonna just as a quick encouragement to anyone that might be watching uh, live or watching this uh, later on YouTube. Um, take advantage of the community aspect of the sinkhole and learn what like if you're brand new to sync, um, it's it may not be in your best interest to just start spamming any everything and anything you have because there might be some things that you would need to learn that is important for the sync industry so if you think about it from a composer or an artist standpoint you're going to have a better shot at building a great relationship with a company like InStyle if you have talked with other people that are in the industry know how those things work can give you some quick feedback might even help you make it uh, you know, better is kind of a relative term, but more usable or something more sync friendly, you know, talk with other, other producers, find out how can this like be so great for sync that like this company would have trouble saying no to it, you know? And, uh, if you utilize opportunities like that, it's going to make their life easier. So they don't have to go through a bunch of stuff. They may recognize the talent. Like, um, Pedro said, there may be some really great songs, but if for whatever reason they can't use it, um, you know, it's not going to be in your best interest to send them all that stuff. And it's not going to be in their best interest to have to like go through all that stuff to, to find all of that. So if you can take those opportunities to learn and grow and get feedback first from a community, whether it's the sinkhole or any other people that are in the sink world, you know, that's going to be a good thing. Yeah. Everybody, please listen to Andrew. That's such an important point. Uh, putting your best foot forward is so important because you're when you reach out, that's the first impression. So I may not see it, but if somebody on my team sees somebody reaching out, they didn't follow the instructions and the music isn't on point, then there's an immediate thought that's put in the mind, right? It's like, well, this person is obviously not being serious about it. They're just kind of throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, so that's, it, it's very important to, to always try to put your best foot forward in those situations. And afterwards, um, speaking of the people, people that we have on board it as well. Um, for example, yesterday we sent out that urgent brief and some people submitted music and clearly didn't read the whole brief. So it's, there's always, there's frustration at all levels. And so it's, it's important to, um, yeah, to read instructions 
and to try to be on the same page as the the company that you're wanting to partner with, right? Um, and if the instructions or some of the terms don't work, then don't get into that relationship because um, it has to work for both sides. And, and that's fine. You know that relationships aren't going to always work uh, with everybody. And that's perfectly, perfectly fine. You just have to find the ones that, that work for you. Um, and anyway, yeah, great, great point, Andrew. Yeah, great point. Any final words, Pedro? And all the, after this is uploaded on YouTube, we'll have all the links, uh, the InStyle, Instagram, X account, Facebook, the website, all that stuff too. So any last words, Pedro, for the night? Thank you for joining us, man. We, we yeah. kept you longer than we uh, aimed for, but thank no you for problem. joining us. The wisdom, the, the knowledge that you've given us all. Yeah, phenomenal no stuff. No problem, my pleasure. Sorry, go ahead, Andrew. I was just saying it was phenomenal. I enjoyed the whole time, so. Great, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you uh, as much. far as last words, I guess, uh, I, I want to thank you guys for the invite. It's it's always a pleasure to take some time to share a little bit of my limited knowledge of the industry. And uh, if if I can contribute in any way to peop to someone's journey, I'm happy that I, I'm able to help. Um, uh, so I I hope that uh, some of what I shared was helpful and not too confusing. I know that I can be a little bit all over the place in, in my thought process sometimes. <laughs> so I hope I wasn't too confusing and uh, that, it, that it was uh, helpful to some people. It was a pleasure listening to people's music and it's always an honor um, that people uh, allow me to critique uh, with my own personal limited knowledge of of their their story and the struggles that they're going through and you know how they arrived at that point in time in their musical journey so it's it it's it, i feel honored to be able to uh listen and be able to hopefully help in some way so thank you guys for the opportunity and uh always a pleasure to do this and of course to hang out with you three uh uh, always a pleasure, whether through the computer or <laughs> in person. Yeah, yeah hopefully we'll get to see, uh, see uh, uh, maybe at the rally for those of us that are going. It'd be yeah, great to reconnect yeah. in person again, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. One more, awesome. I guess we, yeah, I guess we can close well, it I'm out. sad that this Perfect. is <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like we've mentioned for anyone that may have missed it uh if you submitted music and it did not get played tonight we will be passing that music along so no worries to anyone else after the event is over i'll put the rest of the links down below uh i'm not i'm not i'm gonna wait till we're not live anymore to change the description because we tried that once and it messed everything up so we'll get all those <laughs> links down there um if no one has any other final words of course you can join the sinkhole make sure you sign up you know join the sinkhole discord server so you can be a part of this event in the future or similar events like this and thank you for everyone who's here live and we will see you next month with a, another live event for the sinkhole and for those yep. of you that are in Streamyard, you can hang around for a little bit um, no pressure or obligation to anyone um, but that's where we'll be for a while and thank you all any final words no yeah, that's what i was gonna say maybe i didn't Thank the people that joined live as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks oh. for everybody that's that was joining live and asked questions. Um, thank you for taking time of your evening or early morning to, to join <laughs> for Helen. For Helen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was gonna say, Mark. That afterward, after each event, we hang out a little bit. I won't be able to hang out. I got some uh, recording to do for a. a urgent deadline so he's got to go I'll work right now <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get it in man so yeah so thank you awesome. thank you pedro thank you everybody hope you guys have fun at the after party so have a good night everyone all right thanks see, see ya right see on ya. take care <laughs>